Pop quiz, hotshot. Have you ever tickled an ape before? It could work, as tickling is common between many types of primates. What about a rat? You ever tickled one of those? You'd know if you had, because rats let out this high-pitched chirp when you tickle them. It's kind of like rodent laughter. Okay, maybe some of you beastmasters out there have tickled both a rat and an ape, but can you tickle yourself? Probably not, because that's kind of impossible. Under your skin, there are millions of nerve endings that alert your brain whenever you touch something. A light touch, what we usually associate with tickling, is analyzed by two regions of the brain, the somatosensory cortex, which processes touch, and the anterior cingulated cortex, which processes happiness. Together, they process the two types of tickle sensations that we can experience. The first is nismesis. This is the light sensation you feel when something like a feather brushes against your skin, uh, maybe giving you goosebumps. The second, gargalesis, is more like when your older brother holds you down and tickles you until you laugh so hard that you pee. This is the kind of tickling that you cannot replicate yourself. Evolutionary biologists believe that we laugh when we're tickled as an innate submissive response to a potential attacker. These same biologists theorize that we, you know, humans, developed tickling so we could teach our children how to defend themselves from attacks. Think about it, the areas where we're the most ticklish, the underarms, the stomach, and the neck, are also the most vulnerable. This next part is some Black Widow Red Room lethal training, so pay attention. Your underarm is home to veins and arteries. And because your rib cage doesn't protect it, someone could easily access your heart through there, especially with a long enough blade. Likewise, your stomach doesn't have any defensive bones, and your neck has two important arteries, as well as your trachea bringing air to and from your lungs. We're aware of all of these points of vulnerability, but we still can't tickle ourselves at them because our brains know that our own hands don't pose a legitimate threat. MRI studies have shown that your cerebellum actually alerts the rest of your brain when you're about to tickle yourself. This filters it out as unnecessary information and mutes the sensation. So, theoretically, any situation that confuses your brain's ability to predict its own actions should allow you to tickle yourself, right? Well, sometimes. Schizophrenics, for example, can tickle themselves. Researchers theorize that schizophrenic brains have biochemical or structural variations that keep the cerebellum from alerting its owner when they're about to tickle themselves. This means they can't tell the difference between their hands or your hands or the tentacles of a giant squid. So what about you? Even though science says it's impossible, I suspect someone out there has a weird story about tickling themselves. If you like how we talk about them, they are sciences, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another episode of the weird, creepy world of brain stuff.